G'day guys, some of you may know that all the astro photos that I take, I'm usually on my own, because who else wants to get up at two or three or four o'clock in the morning to go and take photos? So what I'm gonna show you today is the best way that I have found to light paint a subject for your astro photos. We're gonna end up with a photo like this. Yesterday I came looking for a subject to shoot and I found this tree here. I use photo pills to work out what time of day I need to be here. And it's gonna be between four and 4.30, which is pretty much now. I've got about half an hour to an hour until the sun rises over the back in the same direction that the galactic core is in. So time is kind of critical. When you've got a couple of people there to do the astrophotography, you can use one person to use the shutter on the camera and you can use another person to light paint with a torch or something. And you've usually got about 30 seconds or so to do that. And often I will do that on my own anyway. But where I am today, there's a lot of crap on the ground. I'm almost certainly gonna fall over and hurt myself. So I've come up with another solution. Before we go any further, the photo that I'm taking today, I'm using the iPhone, but it doesn't have to be the iPhone. You can use any phone at all. The technique will work for all phones. Now the bit of kit that I'm using to light paint the subject today is this. This is just an aperture light. I'll link it down the bottom there. It's just a regular LED panel light. The diffusion on this is very important. It's got a, like a silicon sleeve over it, like many of them do. But the thing that's gonna help me today is what is holding the aperture light. It's just this light stand here. These things are cheap as chips. They're designed to hold video lights and that's what this is essentially, just a really small one. It's gonna work well, I think. The key to doing this is setting it up multiple ways and finding a really nice way to do it. Because it's lightweight, you can move it anywhere. It's high, the same sort of height that you'd be shining a torch at. So it's going to work in that regard as well. But the key thing here is to keep this out of the frame of the photo that you take with your phone. So this is the tripod that I'm taking the photo with, the iPhone's on top of it. I've already taken a test shot, looks like this, looks awesome. And you could certainly argue that the silhouetted photo of that tree and the galactic core is mint, it looks really good. But we wanna add more to it. I wanna get some of the ground in here, there's some dead branches and um, like a bit of grass on the ground here, or dead grass, as well as lighting the ground, it's gonna light the tree and it's gonna give more depth to how that tree looks in the photo. The beauty about the iPhone and the Pixel, uh, they're going to focus on multiple subjects in the photo and layer them together. So this will work really well. If you've got another phone that you need to use manually, like a Samsung phone, for example, you're gonna need to take two shots, one of the tree, one of the stars, and merge them together later on in a software program. Now what I'll do, I'll get this light stand and I'll go and put it just out of frame of this photo. So we want the light from the, uh, from this here, but we don't want the actual light in the photo. That'll do right about there. We'll take a test shot with this and we'll see how we look. For those that you've been wondering, this is the uh, free world tripod. I did a video on it recently. I use the MagSafe holder from Ulanzi. I think those two things are quite a good combination. The phone holder that comes with this tripod is good. I just like the MagSafe functionality of that phone. Now, how I've got this set up, I've got the tree on the left hand uh, third, so the composition should be right. This looks really, really bright though, and I've just realized I turned that light up to record that bit of video before. So I'm gonna turn that down. The beauty of these lights is that it comes down in increments from 100%, it comes down in 1% increments. So you can really, really dial in the light that you need for each photo. And the idea of this is that you're gonna take lots of photos and adjust it over time. So I was gonna turn that down, I'll turn this off and I'll take a photo. That photo's taken, I'm not gonna lie, before I even started recording here tonight, I'd set up a few, few different compositions. And it's important that you do that, I didn't wanna waste your time doing it. And all I'm doing here is putting the tree onto one of the thirds, as long as the galactic core is going to line up some way nicely in that photo. Then I've used different lighting strengths and distances, and they work kind of the same way. The closer you get with that light, the brighter the subject will be. The further away you get, you might need to turn it up a little bit. The difference in the doing those two things is that the ground can be lit up more when it's further away. The light is gonna spread more. So this photo, it's probably one of the best photos I've taken with an iPhone. <laughs> I'm pretty bloody excited about that. Have a look at that. That is just Awesome. And as good as I think that is, we can probably make it better. When you get to the point where you go, this is a fantastic photo, start being critical with yourself as to what you can do to make it better. It's very easy to look at a photo and go, that's great, I'm gonna edit that and it'll be a good photo. And I do that often. 
what I'm trying to do these days is make it even better. And this photo here, I go, how can I make that better? I've got some dead trees on the left hand side of the frame, which I'm not a huge fan of, but that's nothing I can do about that right here on the ground. That's gonna be an edit fix, that one there. I think maybe it's just a little bit too bright, just a fraction too bright with the light. So I'm gonna turn that light down a little bit. I like how much of the ground is being lit up, so I'm not gonna move it away from the tree. So I'll get that light right, and then we'll shoot a pro raw photo. Right, I've taken that torch down or the light down 2% and we'll take the photo again. I'll turn this off, we'll take the photo again. I'm very happy with that photo. I don't think there's anything in this photo I want to change. So what I'm going to do now, I will hit the um, Pro Max or no, Raw Max or Max Raw, whatever the bloody hell it says on the iPhone these days. It used to just say Pro Raw, now it says Raw Max. Um, so we're going, to take a, we're going to take a raw photo is what I'm trying to say. So hit that, I'll turn all this off again, take a photo and I'll explain why we're doing this just in a second. Taking that photo and it's just occurred to me what I haven't done is light this tree from the left hand side. Now when you're lighting this tree, or when you're lighting your subject, don't light it directly from in front of the camera, light it from one of the angles from left or right and it'll just depend on what you're lighting. You may need to do it with a couple of lights, this here is perfectly fine with just the one. But it's important to keep trying different things, different compositions, as you're already there. You don't want to get home, have a look at these photos later and go, damn, I wish I did this. Try it while you're on location. So we tried a lot of different things there and <clears throat> I've come up with what I think is a really good photo. So let's have a look in this photo, with this photo in Lightroom. We'll do a bit of an edit. When I look at the edit of these, I go, what do I need to do? What am I happy with? What am I not happy with? The tree itself, I'm super happy with. I think that's focused really well. It's nice and sharp. I don't want to do anything to that at all. The sky has got a lot of haze, and that's because I'm looking at a chuka, which is about 60 kilometers away, and all that haze in the air is the light pollution from that town. So the foreground and the tree, I don't want to touch. So we're going to go to the masking tools in Adobe Lightroom. We'll add a mask and we'll say select sky. It's going to go through, find the sky, and it does this really, really well. All I'm going to do in here is probably a little bit of contrast, a little bit of clarity, and a little bit of dehazing. So I'll add a bit of dehazing, not too much. It's always going to have a little bit of a haze there. There's not a great deal that we can do about that. We'll add a little bit of clarity. I'm looking at the galactic core there to see if we can get a bit more clarity out of that. Go to light and add some contrast. <clears throat> I think that's it. I don't really want to do too much to this. This is a raw photo, it's captured everything really nicely. We'll go back and have a look at the overall photo and we'll see if we want to change any of the, the white balance. And I don't think I do. No, I really don't. I'm gonna take that back to where it was. I quite like that. So once we're done with this, we'll, you can touch on there and, and hold it and see what it was like before and after. You can see we've got rid of a bit of haze there. I'm quite happy with that photo there. If you want to get this photo, head over to shameawesome.com. I'll put it there so you can download and have a look for yourself. All right, guys, good luck. I'll see you next week.